Always masturbate before any hard decision. What are your NSFW or slightly illegal life hacks? Hello again viewer, I'm so glad you can join me, Andrew the narrator, for another awesome story time. While you're here, why not hit subscribe and the like button, it really helps with the algorithm. If you don't I'll confiscate your Riley Reed flashlight. Anyways hope you did that, let's get into the stories. Torrenting all my university textbooks it saved me thousands of dollars. Does that girl seem out of your league? Picture her taking a crap. It puts her right back on your level. For the ladies? Use coconut oil, a small amount. When you shave your bits. It'll be super soft, like can't keep my hand out of my pants soft. And it helps avoid any little cuts. Bonus. Smells really good too. If you get a parking ticket, keep the envelope ticket. After you pay it, you can now park in that area for free, just put the old ticket on your windshield or whatever whenever you park. Got about an entire year's is worth at my university. When I was younger I started masturbating with my left hand. Now it's the only way I can do it. Browsing my phone for quality material with my right hand is truly amazing. In 8th grade I lived in an apartment, and I used to stick a wad of tissue paper up the vending machine change return. Every evening I'd reach up there and pull my day's loot of change down. I'd pocket about $7 per day. People just assumed the machine ate their change. If your cable bill has gone up a lot, call the company and scream that you want to cancel and go to a competitor. You'll be transferred to their retention department and they'll try and save you as a customer, meaning adding promos. If you escalated enough, you can get some nice deals. Source. I used to work for Time Warner Cable. Edit. When I said scream, I meant it in the figurative sense. Please don't yell at phone reps. Not really illegal but probably punishable, my university charges for printing with little devices next to the printer, which released the print job to the printer. In order to circumvent this, I installed the printers by their IP address, as it goes straight to the printer and prints without having to pay. Doesn't take a lot of work, but I'd say it saved me at least $6. If you are looking for a specific type of job, post an ad on Craigslist for that job with a bogus email address. Now you have a bunch of resumes to use as a guide to make your own. Edit. Full disclosure, I have never done this. I just read it, hee hee, on another similar thread. DBL edit. Apparently ads on Craigslist cost money. So if you decide to try this you will have to do a cost-benefit analysis for yourself. I'm a guy, when I was about 17 I started doing kegels. About two months later I could stay hard after I'd coom and keep going. Now seven years later I can coom seven-eighths times in one sitting. I'm also much harder and maybe even a little thicker but I'm not sure about that. It feels pretty good cooming multiple times although the last few are usually blanks, but still feel just as good. Edit. Since a lot of you are asking, here's how to do it. Just tense that muscle you use when you stop yourself pissing for as long as you can, rest for a few seconds, then do it again. Just do that whenever you think of it, I do it sitting at work quite a lot. If only to post something that isn't about sex. If you're at a crowded concession stand, just go stand up front between two of the long lines. Stand there until someone in the back goes, are you waiting on something? Then say oh yeah, just waiting on my chicken strips. They will bring you chicken strips. Because they have no idea if you actually ordered and paid for them. Edit. It's been really funny reading the replies to this come in. They're pretty equally divided between you'd never duck and get away with that at my stand, and can confirm, this works all the time. I had a boss a long time ago who told me that if his friends were going on a trip out of state country, he would give them his debit card to use. The friends would go and buy hotel rooms food and other things. He'd then, towards the end of their trip, report his card missing. He can prove he was in the area all week, his friends get a free trip to Canada, and the bank refunds my boss all his money. Edit. Oh, slightly illegal. Yeah, this is super illegal. Edit too. Also I should note this was in the early 80s he told me. Boss is in quotes because he was more of a supervisor leader. He also had a scam going where he'd get a fake credit card when he went abroad. 
This was before they had machines so they had that manual ink and paper thing for receipts. He'd use that for free stuff and be gone by morning. A very sketchy man. For the desperately broke homeless youth. I used to do this when I was a skate rat. All you needed was a hammer, a quarter, and an older vending machine. Hammer the quarter flatter and flatter till it's the size of a silver dollar, one dollar coin whatever. Old vending machines obviously don't have the greatest technology in them and can only read the now flatted coin size as a silver dollar. Then hit the coin return. Your quarter just became four quarters. Repeat as much as you like. I turned 0.25 into $30 at one point. Now that I'm older and make good money, I wouldn't do this, but if anyone is ever desperately in need of money homeless it definitely helps. Edit. Yes this is illegal. Edit too. I do not encourage you to do this. Obey the law. Source. Straight from the anarchist cookbook. Most perennial garden plants can be propagated by cuttings. That is, you pinch off a stem from the plant and stick it in soil, and it grows a whole new plant. We have dozens of free plants from just walking through parks and putting twigs stems in our pockets. It's a victimless crime okay. Some edits are now necessary. For those of you who are mad at me, please see this comment. Also, consider the fact you are on a thread about illegal hacks. For those asking how to do this, please see this comment. There are all kinds of extra tips and supplies, but I am assuming that if you're asking how to do cuttings, then you want an uncomplicated explanation without telling you to buy anything. There's no reason to harm the parent plant from which the cutting is taken, don't tear at the plant. If the plant is small and would miss the piece you want to take, don't take it. It should look as if you haven't even been there. I'm talking about if you see a wall of honeysuckle and you take a couple four stems, I'm not advocating taking plants from botanical gardens. And by the way for those who have implied that, come on this is the internet you must have heard of what a straw man argument is by now. I have one that my dad did back in college. More of a one-time life hack than anything. His professor basically spent all his free time writing and trying to sell to Hollywood a script for a movie. He was barely there during office hours, he was super disorganized when it came to the students, things like that. Come finals and my dad slept through it. He slept through the final and was absolutely panicking. So he decided to play things a little underhanded. When grades were posted and his was naturally not there, he went to the professor and said sir, about my test score, I noticed that it wasn't posted. Technically true, although he didn't state the reason why the score wasn't there. The professor began looking through his notes and obviously didn't find the test. But the professor was so disorganized that he was convinced that he had lost the test. Oh, yeah. Um, you got a B plus he said, quickly jotting the grade down on the grade sheet. My dad got up, walked out, and never ducking looked back. Most buffets will bag all the unsold food in a separate trash bag before closing, it's easier for them that way. If you stand around out back you can grab it while it's still warm. Try not to be seen, most workers don't give a crap, but some are weary of a lawsuit and won't let you have it. Also, if you've got a few bucks but know you're going to be homeless soon, buy the following. A decent razor. A decent backpack, go for comfort, duck brands you want something with a waist strap. A quality pocket knife. A military cot, keeps you dry and relatively unbit. A pull-up bar. Sounds stupid, but hangers are free, and the quickest way out of homelessness is five nice unwrinkled shirts. If at all possible, a phone able to access the internet. Forget service, it's nice if you can get it but not a necessity. If you can pick up a smartphone with a cracked screen for cheap, that's your lifeline. That's Craigslist jobs and email your resume office jobs and Google Maps, and lots of other really good stuff. Recharge and surf at McDonald's or Starbucks or whatever is close. Rope. Edit not to kill yourself, life is never that bad. Rope is just good to have around. Small gauge stuff can be used to hang bags of water, put up a tarp if you run across one, replacement shoelaces, repair a busted backpack, hell I even built some makeshift shelves with rope and trashed lumber. Edit again, by popular demand, a gym membership. If you can afford it a gym membership is a good fix for a hot shower. 
Not every small town has a gym, sometimes they can get expensive, sometimes they're just too far away, but it's definitely worth investigating. And finally, hygiene. If you stay clean shaven, wash with soap in nearby rivers, and brush your teeth, no one has to know, and life is 10 times easier. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.